the acting Secretary of Homeland Security refused to rule out a domestic air travel ban and claimed the wait times at most of the 13 airports accepting return flights from Europe have been fixed. Chad Wolf acknowledged that many travelers were facing unacceptable long lines as they waited to be screened at the U.S. airports over the weekend. He said the average wait time for screening was down to 30 minutes at most airports, but the problem had not been fixed for those arriving at Chicago's O'Hare International Airport. We did make the necessary adjustments at 12 of the airports, Wolf said, admitting that the adjustments were not made quick enough. When asked about whether there has been any talks about shutting down domestic air travel, Wolf said they are leaving all options on the table. We continue to look at all options and all options remain on the table to address and will certainly adjust as the medical professionals at the CDC address the medical situation, Wolf said. President Donald Trump's administration has faced harsh criticism from state and local officials who have been angered over the long lines of returning international passengers at some U.S. airports that could have turned them into coronavirus carriers as they tried to get home. Illinois Gov. J.B. Pritzker and Chicago Mayor Lori Lightfoot, both Democrats, lambasted the administration for allowing about 3,000 Americans returning from Europe to be stuck for hours inside the customs area at O'Hare International Airport on Saturday, violating federal recommendations from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention CDC, that people practice social distance. The passengers, many of them rushing home because of fears they would be stuck in Europe, were screened by federal customs and homeland security agents for coronavirus symptoms before they were allowed to leave the airport. Long lines also formed Saturday in Boston, Dallas and others of the 13 airports that are accepting return flights from Europe. Conditions were better on Sunday. People were forced into conditions that are against CDC guidance and are totally unacceptable, Lightfoot said. Lightfoot singled out Vice President Mike Pence and his coronavirus task force for not talking with local officials before implementing the screening program. State and local officials could have offered concrete suggestions for how the program could have been implemented with the least disruption, she said, but the administration acted unilaterally. Thousands of travelers were forced to wait in exceedingly long lines, congregating in concourses and putting themselves and their loved ones at greater risk of exposure, Lightfoot said. Texas Gov. Greg Abbott, a Republican and strong supporter of the president, tweeted Sunday that the lines in Dallas are unacceptable and I'm working hard to get it fixed. Not every U.S. airport accepting European arrivals experienced overcrowding. Airports serving Miami, Seattle, Los Angeles and Newark, New Jersey, reported short lines at Customs Saturday and Sunday. Pritzker said Sunday on NBC's Meet the Presses that the administration should have bolstered staffing at the receiving airports in anticipation of long lines. But instead, he said, passengers were stuck in a small area, hundreds and hundreds of people, and that's exactly what you don't want in this pandemic. Trump was quick to defend his administration's actions in a tweet on Sunday. We are doing very precise medical screenings at our airports. Pardon the interruptions and delays, we are moving as quickly as possible, but it is very important that we be vigilant and careful. We must get it right. Safety first, he wrote. Acting Customs and Border Patrol Commissioner Mark Morgan said in a written statement Sunday that the agency is making improvements to its procedures, but that it must balance our efficiencies with ensuring the health and safety of all American citizens through enhanced medical screening. Katie Rogers spent four hours Saturday at O'Hare in a tightly packed space with students, a basketball team, musicians and older people in wheelchairs. Everybody was nervous about it, she said Sunday. Everyone working there was confused and frustrated, and there were hands were tied, too. Even though she showed no signs of being sick, she now plans to quarantine herself on the organic produce farm she runs in Noblesville, Indiana. Elizabeth Pulvermacher, a University of Wisconsin student, arrived Saturday at O'Hare from Madrid, where she had been studying. The customs process made her feel unsafe, she said. The whole idea is getting rid of the spread of coronavirus, but there were hundreds and hundreds of people in very close proximity, Pulvermacher said. Overcrowding at airports began Saturday night as top U.S. immunologist expert Dr. Anthony Fossey told people to avoid public areas where there are a lot of people around. 
We'd like to not see crowds like that, Fossey told Fox News's Chris Wallace Sunday morning when discussing the scenes from the airports. The scenes at the 13 airports were similar across the country, from Boston to Chicago, Atlanta to Dallas. Lines were particularly bad at JFK Terminal 4, Chicago O'Hare Terminal 5 and Dallas, Fort Worth Airport with passengers packed in tight, many of them wearing face masks. Customs and Border Protection officers were completely overwhelmed as U.S. citizens rushed to get back into the country as Trump's European travel ban went into effect following his Oval Office address Wednesday evening. Some passengers reported that just six out of a possible 60 booths were staffed with agents at JFK Terminal 4. At Chicago O'Hare, lines could be seen snaking along corridors and up escalators as passengers were given additional health screenings. It was a similar picture at Dallas-Fort Worth Airport with passengers waiting for hours and many resigned to sitting on the floor while passengers were processed. Many were concerned about being so close to others during the coronavirus outbreak. DFW Airport said, CBP officers and the CDC are following federal guidelines to conduct enhanced screening for passengers. Under the restrictions, American citizens and green card holders are able to return home to the U.S., but only through one of the 13 designated airports under the understanding that they may also be subjected to health screenings and quarantine orders. On Saturday, Trump announced the United States was to broaden its European travel ban and adding the United Kingdom and Ireland to its list. He originally announced the European travel suspension in his Oval Office address Wednesday. President Donald J. Trump, Vice President Mike Pence Since this is the only communication medium you pay attention to, you need to do something now. Fritzker scolded the Trump administration on Twitter after witnessing the lines at O'Hare. To the frustrated people trying to get home, I have spoken with the mayor and our senators and we are working together to get the federal government to act to solve this. We will do everything within our power to get relief. The federal government needs to get its ass at hash t together. Now. Upon arriving in the country, passengers are subjected to enhanced screening, where they won't have their temperatures taken or be tested for COVID-19, but are asked a series of questions about their medical conditions and travel history. Then, they'll be advised to self-quarantine and follow CDC guidelines. Upon arrival, travelers will proceed to standard customs processing. They will then continue to enhanced entry screening where the passenger will be asked about their medical history, current condition, and asked for contact information for local health authorities. Passengers will then be given written guidance about COVID-19 and directed to proceed to their final destination, and immediately home quarantine in accordance with CDC best practices, the announcement read. The measures are far less severe than had been suggested by Trump in his address, or promised by him on Thursday. Trump insisted that Americans would be tested for the virus before they got on planes in Europe and that if any of them tested positive for the virus, they would not be allowed to board. He did not provide any context for such plans including who would provide the tests, where he would find them and what would happen to passengers who subsequently tested positive. Thousands of Americans scrambled to get home on Friday, often paying thousands of dollars for their fare before the borders close. U.S. airlines like Delta have also begun pulling their flight schedules to Europe, raising the question that transatlantic travel may soon be entirely halted for the entirety of Trump's 30-day ban. There remains an abundance of questions over how long the virus will last, how it will impact America and how Americans will be able to rid themselves of it. There is currently no cure and no vaccine, and only the severely sick or people showing severe symptoms are being given tests due to a shortage and lack of lab staff. Trump declared a national state of emergency as the World Health Organization named Europe the new epicenter of the coronavirus Friday, with countries sealing borders, shutting schools and canceling events in a frenzied attempt to slow the ballooning pandemic. In the United States, there are more than 3,700 confirmed cases of the coronavirus and more than 60 deaths. Globally, there are more than 169,000 confirmed cases and more than 6,500 deaths.